Hey, what's up guys? Today I'll show you a thriller film, Candy Corn. Spoiler ahead, watch out, and take care. The movie starts in the small town of Grove Hill. In the local diner called Cooper's, a gang of three men and one woman, Mike, Bobby, Steve, and Carol, is talking about how a certain freak got a job in the carnival. The freak in question is a mentally challenged outcast named Jacob. Every year, during Halloween, the three men have a tradition of roughing up Jacob at his house. But because Jacob got a job at the carnival, the ambitious Mike, the leader of the gang, wants to do it there instead as a change of pace. Mike plans to go to the carnival, rough Jacob up, strip him down, and let him run back home while everyone gets a good laugh. Carol, Steve's girlfriend, talks to them about this tradition of theirs, telling them that they are too old to be doing this to Jacob. Mike wants to continue their tradition because, as Mike says, it is fun and easy. Carol shakes her head in disbelief and leaves the table. Mike, then, talks to Steve, warning him not to back out. Steve reassures Mike that he will continue with the plan. Bobby, who is seen pondering deeply, also says the same thing to Mike. With that, all of them promptly leave the table. Mike and Bobby, however, approach an employee of the diner named Gus to take something that Gus owes them. When Gus learns of what they are going to do later, Gus, who is bored out of his mind, wants to partake in the later events. Mike declines, but Gus insists by saying that he will not give them what he owes them if he is not allowed to join. Mike decides to let Gus join them. Afterward, Jacob, who is seen watching static on his television, leaves on his bike to go to the carnival, carrying with him a pumpkin basket. Because his house is too far from the town, he got there by night. There, he meets the owner of the carnival. It is a small man named Lester whose stage name is Dr. Death. Lester tells Jacob that he is late. Jacob just looks at him and then goes to the door of the trailer van. But before he enters, Lester calls him and tells him that he is one of them now, a freak. On the other parts of the carnival, Carol inspects the bizarre objects inside the carnival while Steve looks around. Carol informs Steve that she has a bad feeling about what will happen, but Steve reassures her that there is nothing to worry about. After that, Mike signals Steve to move toward the parked trailer vans where Jacob is. While Lester is performing his act to a minimal audience, something bad is about to happen at the backstage. Jacob, who just got out of the trailer, gets approached by Mike, Bobby, Steve, and, as an addition, Gus. Carol, on the other hand, observes from a distance. As they are about to pull a prank on him, Jacob, not wanting to be embarrassed anymore, fights back against them. They, in turn, become aggressive and beat Jacob up. Carol leaves in horror at what she is seeing. Mike, who is visibly angry at Jacob, delivers the final blow by kicking him to the head. After that, Jacob is seen by Lester and other employees of the carnival lying on the ground, beaten to death. Lester orders his men to bring Jacob inside his trailer van. There, Lester decides to bring out a noticeably old, wooden box, which Lester opens with a knife. There, an old mask is seen, among other things. Lester wears the mask on Jacob's face and then recites an occult chant in order to resurrect Jacob. At first, it did not work, but Lester later notices that Jacob moves. The next day, Sam, the sheriff of the town and also Mike's father, patrols the residential area while talking with someone in his walkie-talkie. Sam briefly sees a bloodied Jacob standing on the side of a house, looking with intensity in his eyes. Sam stops to investigate, but he sees nothing. The dispatcher that Sam talked to earlier informs him of a situation back at the station. Sam replies that he is on his way. Upon arriving there, Sam sees Carol who is in tears. Carol explains to Sam that something happened last night, that Mike and the others might have beaten Jacob to death. Sam says that he will ask his son about what happened, but Carol tells Sam not to because the others might know that she reported them. Later that day, inside Cooper's diner, Mike confronts and threatens Carol about a report. Sam immediately goes to the carnival to ask about what happened the previous night. Sam meets Lester, who he asks about what happened the previous night, but Lester dodges the question. Lester, then, tells Sam that he is just like other law enforcers across the country. Someone who always comes late, and someone who Lester does not trust. Sam leaves without getting any information from Lester. After that, Sam goes to Jacob's house and knocks to see if anyone is inside, but he receives no answers. Back at Carol's house, Carol receives a call from an anonymous person, telling her that he knows what she did. Carol, who quickly drops the call, is then surprised by Steve wearing a ghoulish mask. Carol says that she is still traumatized by what she witnessed last night, but Steve assures her that there is nothing to worry about because Sam had already checked on Jacob's house. However, he does not really know what he is talking about and apologizes instead. Carol tells him to never surprise her like that ever again, and then they kissed. Steve tells Carol that he will pick her up later after work. At Cooper's diner, Carol picks her order up. Mike, who had just arrived, 
complains to Carol that he does not appreciate her dropping the call. The anonymous caller is actually him. Furthermore, Mike confronts and threatens Carol about her report to his dad. Carol immediately leaves in fear. After that, Gus enters the diner late. Gus informs his fellow employee that he had fun last night. His friend congratulates him, while the waitress eyes her from a distance. Gus decides to go to the bathroom. There, he is approached by the waitress who undresses in front of her, but it is actually just Gus's wild imagination. Afterward, Gus goes outside the bathroom and sees a pumpkin basket full of candy corn. When he eats one, a dark and brooding figure is seen standing at the entrance of the bathroom, it is Jacob. Immediately, Jacob brutally murders Gus. Sam, along with other local law enforcers, investigates the horrific crime scene. Steve and Carol learn about what happened to Gus. They meet with Mike and Bobby at Bobby's home to discuss the murder, and how it could be related to what occurred the previous night before. Mike, who is visibly irritated, tells them that there is no connection whatsoever, dismissing it as mere coincidence. After everyone else had left, Bobby hears a sound and decides to investigate. In the hallway, he sees a similar pumpkin basket full of candy corn. After approaching it, Bobby is attacked by Jacob, who kills him by ripping his spine off. Sam, along with other law enforcers, returns to the carnival to interview Lester, who again dodges his questioning. News about what happened to Bobby reaches Sam, and they immediately leave the carnival to go to Bobby's house. After getting there, they are horrified by what happened to Bobby. Because of this, Sam orders the dispatcher to issue a curfew that night. He also orders his fellow law enforcers to place the town in lockdown. That night, Sam asks his son again about what happened, but Mike avoids answering. Sam, wanting to get to the bottom of this, leaves and goes to Jacob's house. There, underneath a bed, they see the rotting corpse of Jacob's mother. In the carnival, Lester gets interrogated by other members of the carnival about his connection to what is happening. Lester answers them by telling them that the outside world, dealt the first blow against them and that they should be proud of what they are doing. Lester, then, reveals that he will never die, and rallies them to defend the carnival against an upcoming witch hunt. Inside a theater, Steve and Carol are making love to each other. After undressing down to her undergarments, Carol finds that Steve has disappeared. Steve reappears, but he is now all bloody and dying from being stabbed. Carol screams in horror. Jacob appears again, prompting Carol to run away while screaming even more. But Jacob catches her, rips her tongue off, and kills her. But after that Jacob collapses, Lester, out of nowhere, wakes Jacob up, telling him that the job is not yet finished. Sam and a police officer are patrolling the area. The police officer keeps asking Sam questions that he cannot answer. Sam angrily replies that he does not know anything and that he too is as terrified as him. Then, after noticing that Steve's car is parked outside the theater, they decide to investigate. Inside, they find the murdered couple. After this, Sam talks to Mike about what happened to Bobby, Steve, and Carol. Mike cries in anger over the phone, later deciding to go to the carnival to exact revenge for his friend's death. Mike goes to the carnival to confront Lester. Lester is informed by a carnival member about Mike's presence and asks him what he is doing. Lester tells him that Jacob, who is at his trailer van, needs fresh blood to function again, he also tells him to entertain Mike for a while. Mike, failing to find Lester, is knocked out cold by a carnival member. After waking up, he is forced to watch a strange dancing performance, he also realizes that he is tied to a chair. Meanwhile, Sam goes back home to look for his son. But instead, he meets Lester who is waiting for him. Sam points his revolver to Lester, threatening him that he will shoot him if Lester does not reveal his son's whereabouts. Lester, who is sitting on a chair, stands and says goodbye to the sheriff. After this, Sam is knocked out by a member of the carnival. Lester, then, proceeds to decapitate Sam. At the carnival, Mike wakes up all confused. Suddenly, the lights of the carnival are open. Mike sees a police car, which he recognizes as his father's car. He is visibly delighted by this, smiling at the thought that his father is finally here. But instead, Mike sees his father's head on the hood of the car. Mike is horrified by this, shaking his head in disbelief and denial. Jacob appears from behind a tent, approaching quickly toward the still morning Mike. Jacob punches the surprised Mike and then proceeds to remove both of his arms with brute force. Lester giddily appears and gives Jacob his pumpkin basket. Jacob, then, forcefully removes Mike's teeth one by one. After this, the movie shows that the carnival had moved to another place, Wisconsin. A girl is talking to Lester about his supposed job and about a necklace made out of teeth. The girl asks her if he is some sort of summoner of spirits. Lester replies that he is something like that. The girl follows it up by asking if the teeth necklace is actually real, to which Lester replies that it is real as real gets. The girl doubts the credibility of Lester's work. 
Lester, then, proceeds to tell her that every object that is on display has a story to tell, including the necklace made out of teeth. In addition, Lester cryptically tells her that he has been doing this for a long time. The movie ends with Lester telling the girl that so long as the world is unkind, he will always be there to avenge freaks like Jacob from a society that keeps them down. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.